Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Kansas City Chiefs tonight for Monday Night Football. Andy and Andrew from wagertalk.com are going to be raking down that game from a props perspective. If everyone could, just hit the like button. It really helps us out. Leave a comment in the comment section. Tell us what your best bet is. Give us the same game parlay in the comment section. Always love seeing what you guys are, are betting tonight. But Andrew. You, you know, if, if if you don't have a hot take Ooh. for the comment section, let's just give them a four letter code. It should word. be just that <laughs> word. It should be just ride. ride. Everybody needs to ride with us. Ride. That's what it's Let, be. Let's ride. <laughs> Let, all right. That's the code word of the day. Ride. R-I-D-E. Uh, you guys know it just helps the algorithm, helps us rank a little bit higher on YouTube. Just a little token of appreciation uh, for the work that we put in. So if you don't have a hot take, just type the word ride and uh Let's get into it here, Andrew. Uh, let's start with the uh, passing props here. Um, <laughs> we'll start with passing touchdowns because Baker's the gift that keeps on giving. He just goes over one and a half <laughs> touchdown passes every yep. single game, no matter who's there. And it's plus 135, and I got to be honest, I know this is a good defense, but this is a great rush defense from Kansas City. We watch them with an incredible – goal line stand against the Raiders last week. And this is just not a Buccaneers team that, that runs the ball into the end zone at all. I mean, at all. So if they're going to score touchdowns to me, it, it's just gotta be Baker. This is the Andrew. This team has 21 passing touchdowns and six rushing touchdowns. And two of those are Baker. <laughs> so um, Mahomes. He's not throwing over one and a half touchdowns, but man, if if there is a, a secondary to do it, it's against this one. What's your take here on the quarterbacks tonight? Yeah, and and uh, I told you I've been a big fan of like looking at road home splits. Like, how is a guy doing at home? How's the guy doing at the on the road? I don't care where Baker Mayfield is right now; he's getting this job done. I don't care if he's an underdog; <laughs> uh, he's getting the job done. A favorite getting the job done. Over one and a half passing touchdowns. It, this seems like it's not even a trend play. We can't even call it a trend play. It's just a solid bet at this point, at this price that we are getting here. Um, and, you know, there actually have been surprisingly some Kansas City games that have been lower scoring. You know, we will tip our cap to their defense in some games this season, of course. Uh, but let's be honest. In order to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy, you need to score points. Okay? Uh, we're not talking about just covering. If you're going to beat the Chiefs, you got to put points on the board and you know, over one and a half passing touchdowns. The reason why I really like this one too, is that they're not going to just need two passing touchdowns out of Baker. They're going to need probably one. That's real nice. Like one, that's probably like a 35 yarder, 30, 40 yarder, which means, you know, there's going to be throwing the ball a ton, um, which is kind of takes me to the last one. He's hitting three straight games over 22 and a half pass completions. You know, one thing about Baker that nobody ever really said about him before. And I guess it was, it was justified. I I've kind of respected his decision-making lately. You know, I look back at a lot of his tape and I was looking at some of his stats here. His completion percentage has been really steady for like the last like season and a, and a half. Uh, Andy, this guy's not really making too many mistakes. So um, whether the guys open downfield or whether it's a short pass to be made, um, unlike Joe Flacco last night when he saw a guy five feet wide open in front of him and he decided not to make that pass. <laughs> I'm hoping that Baker will make the easy pass. Uh, and the only other one that stood up, stood up to me, uh, I was joking to you before we came on air here, uh, was that I'm finally not scared of the interception props anymore. I, I used to not like them, uh, but now I've started to get going with them again. And uh, we're seeing for Mahomes eight straight games with an interception, and I got this at even money. Also, four straight games at home with an interception, Patrick Mahomes. So um, that's what's scary is ATS, straight up, whatever it may be for this Chiefs team, they're having a good year, and their players overall aren't even really having a good year. That's kind of scary, Andy. Yeah, that completions is really good. I mean, the Buccaneers, are, the Buccaneers aren't stopping anybody, so... Even though Mahomes has not had a, a good year, man, this Bucks is what they're they're now third worst in the league with passing yards per game. Only Jacksonville and Baltimore um, are worse than them. So, uh, and even in the last three, they're 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 second worst. So, I would be looking at Mahomes. I, it's it is really hard though I, I, to take a Mahomes over just because he's just not not getting it done. But 
I would look at the 249. Uh, I was looking, you mentioned the uh, completions. I, you're, I think you're dead on on the Baker one. That Like the last two uh, weeks, 37 and 31, like talk about like, like flying over. Yeah. And it's just like they get down. That garbage time counts. Just ask Chris Godwin uh, if garbage time counts in, in the NFL. So. Just ask Waddle. <laughs> Just Minus ask Waddle. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I saw Ruin to his to a whip from an over to an under just on that last play of the game. Uh, so yeah, that was that was unfortunate. So um, yeah, I, I think I think we may look at some some overs on this one. Then again, if it's a clunky game and the Chiefs do what they do, which is just grind out the clock and not let anybody do anything. Um, I would, I'll, I'll take this time to say, keep betting the Chiefs second half under it, it. It just keeps hitting. It's one of those where you have to bet, bet it all the time or none of the, of the time, but their second halves, they just keep going under and under and under um, their defense is great. Their running game uh, just grinds out the clock and um, that they just don't allow a whole lot of points. So, all right, let's take a look at, the rushing props. Any of these jump out to you? Uh, I, I know that they're a great rush defense, but I don't know. White and Irving, both at 27 and a half, 32 and a half. I mean, I guess they did hold Alexander Madison to 15, but I don't know. Those numbers seem pretty low to me. What do you think? Uh, there's one that I got down. It was one of those combo props. I've been actually playing them a lot more than I used to. was the uh, Xavier Worthy under 39 and a half rushing plus receiving. Uh People got obsessed with uh, with with this prop with him a little bit early in the season because I think in like his second career game, he had they were kind of utilizing him in that way, you know, kind of a little the handoff to him or kind of the shovel pass to him and just kind of like finding ways to use his speed. Um, but that that's kind of fizzled out a little bit. They're kind of using him as you know he gets like one or two burst plays every game, and then that's about it. One thing about this Chiefs team right now is that. Uh, and again, this is kind of what I'm saying. They're not even playing like a great individual uh, season, but they're all there's so many talented guys out there is that, you know, Worthy could have a good game and contribute to this one, Andy, and go under this number. You know, mm. Mahomes could have a decent game, make some clutch passes. You know, you've got Noah Gray and, you know, Kelsey both contributing in the receiving game. So like prop guys aren't happy in chief games right now, especially guys that like betting a lot of overs. Um, but I think... In some scenarios, it's probably a good thing. And speaking of Mahomes, I actually do think his 18 and a half uh, for his rushing is a little bit light. Um, I, I think against teams that tend to put up points in games that we've seen, and I expect some points in this one, in games that we've seen higher scoring battles, like all the games that I'm scrolling through with his log that have been like relatively low scoring, he hasn't gone through, gone over his number, um, Mahomes with his with his rushing yards. Any game that has some decent amount of points and against the team that I kind of respect, he's going over his number and he's uh, it seems like he goes over at home a lot more. What what's your take on uh, on Irving right now? Because for me, I I find the inconsistency level kind of bothers me. Like if anything, I'd probably look towards the under for him just because I like the completions prop and more passing attack for the Bucks. Well, Bucky Irving is that you know he's like that guy where you're like. You, you you would think he's going to get the carries, but the defense has just been so good. And this is, this is one of those things where it's like, like uh, I'll, I'll go to NBA. I've been hitting team totals overs, but on bad teams because the total's so low. So you okay. have to judge like, okay, I know the defense is great, but did the books over adjust here? So 32 and a half, you know, Against Baltimore, nine carries for 23 yards. Uh, but then against Atlanta, nine for 44. Against New Orleans, a terrible uh, rush defense. He had 81 yards. So um, I guess I would go back against De uh, Detroit. That's a pretty good rush defense. Only seven for 22. And that was in a win. Um, so he, I, he's a little bit dependent on some of the big plays. I, I, I just can't take a running back over against this Chiefs defense like yeah. after what i watched last you know the last couple games with them i i just can't they just their defense is so good against the run that you just can't get any you can't get any push going this is a tampa bay team that throws so um i would say under 32 and a half uh, unfortunately though if he busts a 20 yard run on one play your bets yeah. you know your under is dead 
So um, I would look at uh, at Kareem Hunt at uh, 63 and a half, or I might even look at Kareem Hunt over 17 and a half. Actually, I think I like the Kareem Hunt. I like that. Yeah, 21, 22, and 27 the last, like, the last three games. It's his job. It's not even close to his job. If they're up, better believe he's going to be in there. Um, you know, and that probably ties into your second half under you're talking about, right? A hundred percent. You have to say it's correlated. Chiefs run down the clock. You know, um, you, you know, I hit the under last week in the Raiders game, and that was with Mahomes. You know, he threw he threw the ball got deflected. The Raiders get an interception and run it down to like the two yard line. They can't get any points out of it just because that defense is is so yeah. good. So yeah, Kareem Hunt over his rush attempts. I think I like that one a lot. Um, I you could probably take the rush yards at sixty three and a half. It was a little worrisome that he only averaged two point eight yards per carry. Like that's the worry thing about him is his yards per carry is not very good. Three point eight, three point five, and two point eight the last few weeks. And a lot of that is that teams are just like, who's Mahomes going to throw the ball to? Let's just stack the box. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like your take on Patrick Mahomes. Um, he's been, he's been really good with his legs. He's not like running a lot of attempts, but it's like kind of the quality versus quantity thing. Like when he does take off, he just huge lane that he can run through. So those can be stressful, man. Those can be stressful. You're waiting for that <laughs> one run to help yep. you get there. Yep. Yep. If he gets there early, it's just great. You watch the rest of the game and you know, you're good to go. Uh, we had one of the, we had Zach Charbonnet over his receiving. It's like, or like first quarter gets a dump off runs like 25 yards. It was like, ah, we can watch the game and not have nice. to stress. Those are the best. You're right. Those are the absolute best. Uh, we're going to get to the receiving, uh, receiving props here in just a minute. Andrew, I know you got an NHL play of the night. Best bet up at wager. Talk, tell everyone about that. I'm excited, Andy, because, you know, it's funny. Uh, last week, they tried to balance the NHL schedule out. But this week, it's back to the old ways, right? Not much going on Monday. Tuesday's stacked. Wednesday's quiet. Thursday's stacked. But I told myself this season, I don't want to forget about those quiet nights. And this is one of those quiet nights. Two NHL games here on tap. Uh, and I really like one of them. I like a side play in one of them here. So I'm locked and loaded with a 3% play. You guys can grab that at wagertalk.com. And it's also the last day of my um, three-day uh, for the price of one deal. Uh, code AM39 gets three days for the price of one. Uh, and I believe the 30-day uh, is still available for like, what, one or two days, right, Andy? For the uh, NHL or NBA pass. Is that still available, I think, till till tomorrow? Yes. or? Yes, you can get NHL, NBA uh, combinations, so you can take advantage of that. Uh, yeah, go grab Andrew's NHL play. Yeah, you're right. So I, I do the same thing. Sometimes it's light on the board, and then you're like, oh, wait, but one of those games was like the perfect situation. So yeah. uh, very important. Don't worry. Uh, don't uh, don't miss out on some of those really nice opportunities, even though the slate might be nice. Um, I do have – I am in play on Monday Night Football. Just found a gem of a play that I really like. We were three and zero yesterday in NFL. Uh, that was a really, really nice way to to end the week and uh, get the NFL week started. We've hit six straight profitable weeks. Um, it wasn't a good start to the season. We were we were down, uh, you know, in the first couple of weeks, but we really turned it around. Seeing the board well, one play really, really stuck out. So we got that. And then NBA, uh, don't ignore NBA as well. I'm, I've only had five plays this season. Hit all five of them. And Boom. this is a yeah. And this is a four percent play. This play is four and zero. Oh. This season, uh, it's only taken place four times. It's hit every single time. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this NBA play tonight. So I'll be keeping my eye on NBA and NFL. So go ahead and take advantage of that. WT.buzz slash AL. We're up 163 units, 2024, creeping in on that plus 175. So really, really proud about that. All right, let's talk receiving props. Um, I'll, I'll just start. I, I just love this Kate Otten at 53 and a half. He's obliterated it in the last few games he's had like i think he's had 10 targets in each of the last couple games flown over this and believe it or not andrew chiefs worst team in the league against tight ends giving up 80 yards per game to to receiving tight end so looking for receiving props to me k dotton is the one that stands out to me what's your take on the receiving props yeah, I've got um, I've I've got uh, this uh, the the Bucks ranking in the bottom. Uh, I have them seventh uh, from where I'm looking right now as far as against tight ends. There's sixth or seventh 
uh, overall. Um, and, and this is a spot where, again, I'm going to go with Noah Gray. I love taking these secondary guys. I mentioned him kind of earlier. That number hasn't really budged uh, at all, you know, and obviously th- there's a reason that you're not going to see kind of the secondary guy, um, his number move throughout the week. It's the same thing with the RB2, unless the RB1's number moves big time, it's not going to move. And uh, you can also get his receptions over two and a half is like around plus 120. And you take a look at his game log recently. Targets are three, four, two, four, three, three, two, two. I mean, there's been some decent numbers in there. And for him, you can try and decide to yourself what you want. For me, I would much prefer the receiving yards because you take a look at kind of the average length of uh, uh, distance of reception. You know, it's like 10 or 15 yards and his number is 22. I think if we get two receptions tonight, Noah Gray cashes this prop for us. We're talking 23, 66, 29, and 40 in his last four games. Yes, we got lucky by a half uh, last week as far as going over with 23. But uh, this is kind of one of those buy low ones. And it's funny. Both teams tonight, as far as the previous rankings are concerned, aren't that great against tight ends. So um, people cash those national tight end tickets. Uh, what was it? Two weekends ago, <laughs> yeah. maybe tonight's a night there. You and I can both look at uh, the tight ends, um, in the NFL. Yeah. Um, I was looking at Deandre Hopkins trying to figure out what to do with him and man, the books are expecting a lot from him tonight. He had two catches last week for only 29 yards and they've said, we think he's 15, 16 yards better this week. I know the Bucks are pretty, pretty bad at receiving. I, I guess I, I guess I could see it, but I'm stunned that the books are just like, oh, we think he's healthy. We think he's going to get a ton more production. Um, so that one really uh, jumped off the page to me in that one. Um, I also, I have a little bit more faith in Jalen McMillan. I think he has got to be a bigger part of, of what the Bucks are doing. So it's, it's got to be tough for him going from like, I barely see the field with, with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin to now like, I'm um, like one of the main guys. Uh, but this is a guy, he had eight targets two weeks ago and seven targets uh, last week, only three catches and four catches. So his yards haven't been there 15 and 35. I got to believe his rapport with Baker's getting better. And uh, I, I expect bigger, bigger games for him. In fact, I, I wouldn't mind, taking his over tonight and then kind of rolling it over. Cause I don't think you're going to see a big bump in production, but I just have faith that the more weeks and the more practice and the more reps that he gets with Baker, he's going to be a little bit more productive. So um, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those like hunches. Like I don't have a lot of numbers to back it up. You know, I'm not like out here, like check out this number and check out this number and check out <laughs> this number. But sometimes you got to roll the dice and say, I'm going to get out ahead of what I think is going to happen with these teams. So um, is it uh, over the top to say that, uh, you know, we talk about Irving going under his, his rushing number that he potentially could be a receiving guy tonight. I I looked at the numbers again. It's one of those things where it's not like we can go crazy about like recent history for him. Um, But as far as the game plan is concerned, as far as how aggressive this chiefs team can be, and as far as what their rushing defense can do, what if they just start slipping it out to him with these, you know, two or three yard passes and kind of utilizing him in that way, kind of not being a running back, but necessarily just kind of catching these short balls. He could, um, that 15 and a half is like really close to being a number I like. Cause I love these running backs that can catch passes and get it on one yeah. uh, play. I mean, against the Falcons, he, he had seven catches. So, you know, it's a guy that can do it. Uh, before that, he had three catches for 54 yards. So, yeah, the numbers the numbers pretty low. You just don't think of Bucky Irving as that guy. Yeah. But, they, they, I mean, the Bucks need guys to catch passes. Like, step up, guys. So, it, it, it could absolutely work. Um, I was going to bring up Kareem Hunt under 12 and a half. Uh, he, he's, he's running the ball. They don't. He's a running back. He's a, he's a, <laughs> he's a running running back. <laughs> he's yeah. not one of these guys that, that catches a bunch. Uh, his last two games, he's combined for three catches for nine yards. Like that's not what he does. And, and you do not want Kareem Hunt getting 30 touches in a game. Yeah. It's not going to last all season. So there was a point um, where he was that guy, but at this point, the, if we're liking the attempts on rush, then we're going to stay away from anything to do with him catching a ball. Yeah. And uh, it's it, it, like 
it's like how much can you ask a guy like that to do who's almost 30? So, I mean, he wasn't even on the team uh, to start the season. So it's not like they had this big plan. So, yeah, you're not going to use Cream Hunt a ton everywhere. But, again, that number is a little bit worrisome. Um, but I, I, I would take the under uh, on that one. So um, let's see. Any other receiving props you like in this one? I mean, I mentioned – Look, everyone's gonna. Everyone loves talking about Kelsey. Still, I think the hype hasn't really quieted down on him. I think if you like Kelsey tonight, you just take the touchdown. That's what I think I would do for the Chiefs. Mm. I would. I would take. I. I think that 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 um, tonight might be one of those nights where the the two top options are going to hit for the for the Chiefs. I know nobody yeah. wants to hear that, and I feel like for the Bucks, you can kind of go down a little bit. You can look at maybe McMillan. You can look at Kate Otten. You can look at some better, more plus money. But, uh, yeah, as far as I think if you like Travis Kelly, he's going to get a few looks in the end zone tonight. Yeah, I like that Kate Otten at plus 220. He's, I mean, you could argue he's the number one wide receiver on that team at this point. So, um, yeah, minus 200. I, I, you know, I, I got to tell you, I think I'm with you that this minus 200, yeah, if they get in close, they probably run. But the way to attack this Bucks team is through the air. Their they're, they're secondary is just horrible. So, yeah, if you're, if you're even money on Kelsey's, Boy, you could do way worse on bets uh, tonight <laughs> in that one. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. So, uh, let's see. Was trying to think if there was anything else. I can't really think of anything. There's not a ton that I really like, but the plays that I do like are 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 pretty good. So, I think if you just get one or two uh, solid plays uh, for tonight, I think you'll be good. Uh, we got some time. Let's just build a same game parlay, Andrew. Let's, let's do just, it. Let's just let's just have a have a little bit of fun. Uh, I'll we'll each do two. You give me one leg, I'll give you a, a leg. You give me a leg, and I'll give you a leg. What was somebody that you liked? And uh, we'll start. We'll make a same game parlay. Uh, well, I like, I like the completions. I like the completions for for Baker tonight. Oh, there you go. Okay, so we'll go to uh, passing props, and we'll go. 22 and a half on, on the completions. Um, I really like the receiving props. So uh, I will, I'll throw K dot and at, uh, you know what? Just give me 40 yards. Give me 40 yards there. So, um, Patrick. all right, you get your next, what's your next leg, Andrew? Let's go. Uh, Patrick Mahomes rushing yards. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Rushing yards. We'll throw 19 and a half in there. And then uh, let's get wonky. We've got a receiving. We've got a rushing. We've got a passing. So I will add a, another receiving prop. And I will go with, I'll go with my, my, my guy. Uh, I'll go with my guy, Jade, uh, Jalen McMillan, 40 yards. Let's go. Uh, I think he, I think he has a big game and gets it done. All right. I'm so locking this in right after the show, right, right after so, the show. I'm locking this in. All right. So here's your, your six to one long shots, uh, plus six twenty five. We got Baker over 22 and a half passing completions, K dot and 40 plus, uh, receiving yards, Mahomes over 19 and a half rushing yards and Jadlin McMillan 40 <laughs> plus receiving yards. There's your six to one. So. I you know what? I want to see if anybody else tonight in the world is going to make a slip with those picks. That That's a little bit spread out, a little bit mixed up. Uh, same gamer, I'd say. It's pretty weird. Uh, do you remember a couple weeks ago when I brought up the uh, same game parlay of Kirk Cousins under half yard rushing, but over one and a half? I guess saw who, your tweet yesterday, or I saw someone who, else's tweet. Yeah. Guess who did it again? And yeah. credit to that person because they did the same thing with Jared Goff. Wow. Wow. <laughs> same exact thing. So you pretty much got to think they're going to win, right? And then also the, not the pre- rushed. The premise is you take quarterbacks that absolutely do not rush, but you think they're going to win. And what happens is you, so you take the under half a yard rushing because when they kneel down, it's a minus one yard or sometimes it's minus two. If they hike it, you know, you see him like take a couple steps yeah, back yeah. and those count as rushing attempts. So if you have these older quarterbacks that you think are going to win, but not rush, you take their under rushing yards, but you're, they're over rush attempts and, and they're paying it five and six to one. That's the other, these, this isn't like an even money type of thing. It's just, because of the non-correlation, right? That's exactly right. Whenever you have a same game parlay and you put something that that is not correlated together, you're going to get a little bit better odds. So uh, that is it. So, uh, 
<laughs> amazing job. Amazing job. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for it. Don't forget the uh, four letter code word to put in the comment section is ride. R I D E really helps us out. Uh, don't forget to grab uh, Andrew's NHL play of the night. We know Monday night football is up there, but don't forget profits are all over the place. Take advantage in NHL. Uh, if you are looking for something on Monday night football, I am in play tonight uh, with a play that I just absolutely love. And we've also got a 4% play over in the NBA perfect five and zero this season. So thanks very much guys. Good luck on all your plays on Monday night football, and we will see everyone next time.